Hey guys, it's Joey at Titan Tech where we help you level up your data analysis skills. Today we're going to talk about three reasons why you should use Elixir for your next data analysis project. Stick around to the end where we share some bonus features Elixir has that Excel currently doesn't that are absolute game changers. With that, let's dive in. As many of you already know, our spreadsheets become overly complicated over time and become difficult to update and audit. Throughout the life cycle of any Excel workbook, errors are guaranteed to be created. It could be as simple as copy and pasting over the wrong cells, creating a circular referencing uh, issue by linking cells back to themselves, broken links being created from data sources being moved, changed, or just deleted. If you've worked in Excel for any decent amount of time, you've probably come across one of these errors. The problem is, it's not always obvious where the source of the error is created. Elixir lets us know exactly where the problems lie. No longer do we need to hunt and peck for problems that are 10 sheets deep. Let's jump over to the code to see what I'm talking about. So here what you'll see is some code that I've written where all I'm trying to do is just to get a file path name to a CSV. I want to read the table of the CSV into, into my code as a, as a data frame, right? Data frame, table, synonymous, right? And so as you see, if I run it, works perfectly, no issues. Now, let's say I happen, I'm going to comment out the, where the path, where the actual CSV is. Let's say, now let's try and rerun the code. Oh, notice it says, the path does not exist. Okay, so this path is wrong. And look, it even tells me, okay, the file is in your documents. Here's the here's the actual file we're in and the actual row, sorry, the actual row, right? Four. That's so this is exactly where the problem's coming from. So I know there's something wrong here. Right? We could trace back, okay, where's this path? Oh, it's not been defined. Boom. Rerun it. Now we're good to go. Right? And so Elixir really helps us focus in and get laser focused on where our problems are finding and saves us a ton of time. So let's move on to our next problem of organization. Right, You know your spreadsheet model better than anyone else. You know it inside and out, but do you still find yourself getting lost in your own workbook and you're not sure why these errors keep popping up? Oftentimes this can be due to modeling patchwork. What do I mean by that? What I mean is oftentimes we're building on top of others' workbooks or on top of our own previous work, right? Maybe it's six months, we're now finally coming back to it, adding some new features. Well, through this process of just adding new features, it often becomes difficult, tedious, and time consuming to update our workbooks. And often throughout that process, we end up breaking our own existing formulas. You see, the process of continually adding functionality without a nice, clear, organized plan may have your workbook looking something like this. On the flip side, Elixir actually guides us into organizing our data and code by creating a step-by-step -step plan to get from raw data to a final product. You see, Elixir is actually made for transforming data in a structured way to help you scale up your data analysis. Let's jump over to the code to see what I'm talking about. So here I've got, I've got a little bit of code where all I'm trying to do is I'm trying to take some numbers, right? Take a, take a numbers, create a list, and then just multiply them all by two, right? In a list, nothing, nothing crazy going on here, but let's, let's break it down, right? So if I go ahead and comment these out, right? You see, so this is Elixir shorthand uh, for for creating um, the numbers 1 through 10, right? And as opposed to me having to write it out uh, 1, 2, 3, you know, all the way up to 10. And then you can see I'm going to take those numbers. I want to put them into a list, okay? Makes sense. And then to use Explorer, we need to put these into a series. Okay, nothing crazy going on here. And then now that we've got it in, in like Explorer uh, defined as a series, we can actually go ahead and start using some of the functionality in Explorer to multiply by two, perfect. And and we'll get into more of what it means later, but my point here that I really wanna highlight, right, is we're able to create steps, right? Okay, step, hey, I want this group of numbers. Step two, 
Now let's put it into a list. Step three, convert that list into what we need uh, for Explorer. And then step four, finally multiply everything by two. And so the process of, of writing our code in logical steps like this actually helps us organize our thoughts into a recipe to turn our data into actionable information, much like following steps to transform raw ingredients into a cake. Say, for example, you need flour, sugar, salt, eggs to all make a cake. Right? We don't just guess at how much of each ingredient we need to use. We need specific ingredients. We need specific amounts of ingredients. We then need to mix those ingredients and bake them to create a cake. Well, just like with the data sets, right? We're not going to use all the information that's possibly available to us. We need to create steps to get, create, and mix the data sets we need to solve the problem at hand. In doing this, we create a series of steps that can be reused over and over and over, like baking recipes. In the data science world, they would refer to this as data wrangling. If you'd like to see an example of what Elixir could build, go check out TitanDealHub.com. TitanDealHub.com is a place to find and search great deals on Amazon. At the top, you'll see some of the newest deals we found. Below that, you'll see our search options, followed by our hub of existing deals. It's easy to find any product you want in our search bar. If we don't already have what you're looking for, our search will pull in new items in real time from Amazon. Feel free to see what's available within one of our 20 categories for which all items can be sorted in multiple ways by price and discount. If you see something that piques your interest but want to see similar items, click on our compare button to find all relevant products. All right, so let's move on to our last problem, working with big data, right? Excel tops out at about a million, a little over a million rows per worksheet. And if you've tried to do work with too much data in Excel, you probably see an error like this. On the other hand, Elixir actually uses a package called Explorer, which we talked a little bit about in the last section. And this, and Explorer is actually built for working with tabular data. Because you see Explorer is actually built on top of another package named Polars. I won't get into the technicals here, but Polars happens to be one of the fastest data analysis packages around. Now again, let's not take my word for it. If we go, here's over there, uh, over to Polars webpage, right? So here was, um, here was a benchmark done by H2O AI. And so what they've done is they actually ran, they ran some different analyses at, with different amounts of data, right? So the first one, here's, here's it doing some simple analysis at five gigs, complex analysis at five gigs, and simple analysis at 50 gigs. And if you notice, Polars, right? The thing, the thing uh, Explorer's built on top of, it, Polars is the fastest in every scenario, right? I mean, look, 50, doing anything with 50 gigs in just over two minutes is crazy fast. Most other data frame tables can't handle that, handle that, right? But again, let's let's actually run this, and actually let's check a scenario, right? So here I've restarted all my code, or let's let's actually restart just to make sure. Okay, I'm gonna reconnect. Perfect. So we'll need to restart this. Okay, good. Everything's loaded in. Now, here we've got a chunk of code, and all we're gonna do is just. I've, I've found here's the here's the CSV file I want and then here here's us just reading in that CSV nothing nothing crazy and it's that fast that we just read in five almost five and a half million rows and five columns and it took a little bit it took about 0.2 seconds right think about how fast that is 0.2 seconds we can't even load in five million rows into Excel and we just did it in 0.2 seconds, right? So the point I'm trying to stress here is using one of the most capable libraries around will allow us to start small 
and eventually scale up our analysis as our data needs increase, right? This reduces, this removes the need to relearn new tools when our data sets grow, right? And this is something that we often uh, have issues with when using other tools. All right, now onto the bonus features. Okay, before we finish, I'd like to show you a few more features that Elixir has that Excel doesn't and honestly probably never will. So let's jump over to this blog post. So here we have a table that was taken out of the book Elixir in Action. And so I wanna focus on these last three right here, persistable data, background jobs, and service crash recovery. What does that even mean? Persistable data. Let's say that you wanna save some information, save, uh, save your data that you've built. Well, normally when you wanna do this, right, you need to set up if you say you want to set up a Redis database or Mongo database or, or maybe a, some sort of SQL database, right? Well, in Elixir, which I know it says Erlang, but Elixir is built on top of Erlang, so it's pretty much the same thing. Um, it, it is the same thing. But in Elixir, you don't need to do that. They already have a built-in database, a database built into the language called Amnesia. No need to worry about it, right? So what this prevents us from doing is having a need to pay for and set up another server somewhere in the cloud. And then we've got more login credentials, more passwords that we need to manage and figure out how to make those things talk together. Don't need that whatsoever. Now, once we've got that, right, a lot of times we want to automate our analysis, right? We want to put it on some sort of schedule. So that's what this background jobs is talking about. Background jobs, um, normally to do something like this, Right, we would have to set up another Linux server, right? Write, write some, they call them cron jobs, write a cron job, set up a, set it up on a timer, maybe write some bash scripts of here's what we want executed. Don't need to do that. In Elixir, it's already taken care of. Elixir already has, um, already has functions built into it that allow us to run our analysis on any sort of uh, period we want, right? If we want to do it once a day, no problem. Once, once an hour, once a week, doesn't matter, whatever you choose, it's already handled. And then finally, uptime, right? Hey, we want, once our analysis is going, right, we wanna make sure that it's there for our users um, when they need it, right? And that's what this service crash recovery is talking about, right? The fact that if, when stuff fails, cause it, you know, we're humans, we make errors, things will eventually fail at some point. Hey, this, is, this has service crash recovery already built into it, right? As opposed to having to pay for a service like Upstart, right? Elixir already has it built in. We, so they use things called supervi uh, supervisors and we're not gonna get into all that. Um, it's outside the scope of what we're talking about today, but just know that it's already taken care of. There's already things in place that will, um, that will automatically restart your, your analysis should something fail. And then finally, let's jump over to a couple of big companies that are already using Elixir, right? Like, hey, not really heard of it. Who's using this? Is it really production worthy, right? So first first group I wanna look at is Discord, right? Tons of people use Discord. And here's an article talking about how Discord scaled Elixir to five million concurrent users. That means they had five million people using Discord at the same time, right? I hope you can appreciate that is a monumental task. That is not something that that most tools can handle. And then also WhatsApp, right? If we jump over to WhatsApp, here's the title, right? Why WhatsApp only needs 50 engineers for its 900 million users. That is an insanely small team relative to the user base, relative to the number of users that it has, right? And so guys, I hope you'll understand the point, the point I'm trying to drive home here is that when your customers depend on your analysis, having it up and available for them is of the utmost importance. And it can be really, really hard to do that once your analysis leaves your machine. But see, Elixir simplifies a ton of this complexity when we're trying to scale up or when we wanna share our analysis, which is gonna save you time and money. So in future videos, we're gonna use Free CodeCamp's Excel course to rebuild five projects in Elixir 
which are going to be which we'll be doing side by side comparisons so you know exactly what's happening every step of the way and don't worry if you've never programmed before the series is geared towards Excel users who have never programmed but still want to take their analysis to the next level but before we jump into it our next video is going to help you get started by installing and setting up Elixir, Livebook, and Explorer. Thanks so much for your time, guys. If you found this content helpful and want to support the channel, please go check out TitanDealHub.com, where you can search for and find the best deals on Amazon for free. All the links mentioned in the video can be found in the description box right below. If you have any questions, concerns, or thoughts, please leave them in the comments. Thanks again, and have a great day.